Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and you can pre-order all the Double Masters cards you need now over at CardKingdom.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for our first daily dose of Double Masters spoilers, and good lord, do we have some sweet and expensive and spicy and in-demand reprints to talk about today, which means we should probably jump right into it, start talking about new cards, but before we do, a couple of things about Double Masters itself. First and foremost, an important note. As a master set, Double Masters does not change the formats that cards are legal in. So if a card that is reprinted in Double Masters is legal and modern, it's still going to be legal and modern. But if a card is only legal in like Legacy, let's say, or Commander, like a Commander Precon card, it's not going to become legal in modern or any other format because of this reprinting. So no legality changes as far as formats. The other thing I wanted to mention really quickly is doing something that we've done in the past a long time ago for Double Masters, which is essentially keeping a live EV or at least average value calculation going. So I will link this sheet down in the description of this video. But if you want to check in on it. We're updating it throughout the day, so basically you can kind of see the value of the set develop in real time, hopefully be able to make an informed decision about if you want to pre-order boxes or packs or any of that stuff. So I wanted to mention that as well. But anyway, let's talk sweet new Double Masters card, starting with probably the most exciting reprint of the day, Jace the Mind Sculptor, making its return not just in the set itself, but as a box topper as well. So Jace, not a whole lot to say about this one. It's literally one of the best plays walkers in the history of magic maybe number two on the list behind oku at this point but it does everything it pluses to fate seal it brainstorms it bounces things the ultimate wins the game it is a very strong planeswalker that sees play literally cross formats in modern it's in top tier decks like bant control blue white control in legacy it sees play in miracles in some standstill style decks with mishra's factory back in vintage there's planeswalker decks with deck fade that play it so jason by sculptor it's just an ultra stable it sees play everywhere it's really really expensive, currently around $90, I think, for the cheapest printing, and I'm sure the box topper printing is going to be insanely expensive. The only thing that's a little bit weird is out of the 40 box toppers that we're getting in Double Masters, 39 of them get new art for their box topper version. Jace the Mind Sculptor is the one that does not, although Jace's original art is so iconic, maybe it's fine that it doesn't get an update, uh, but definitely a really solid, really good reprint coming soon to Double Masters. Speaking of Planeswalkers, next on our list, we have Card Liberated uh, with a box topper version as well. Skinny Card is a box topper version. Another really powerful really expensive planeswalker karn uh, seven mana pluses to make an opponent exile something from their hand negative threes to exile target permanent and then if you get to ultimate you restart the game with all the permanents that card exiled it has so much loyalty if you plus it right away it goes up to 10 it is close to unkillable a really powerful card that does exactly one thing as far as competitive magic is concerned which is come down on turn three with the help of tron lands like that's the reason that karn is in demand in 40 dollars in the box topper will be so expensive is it's just the perfect finisher for tron decks and Tron is a top tier archetype in modern and has been for a very long time. So the demand is always going to be there. Does see a little bit of playing commander decks. It's kind of a fun way if you're playing mono blue or a color that struggles with unconditional removal. Karn can snipe anything and do it twice. Uh, so I kind of like to play Karn in that context. Not a super heavily played card in commander, but does have some play there. So sweet to see card returning. High value reprint. The box stopper. I don't know about the art, but it makes a little bit more sense as we go along. It's actually a pan panorama with some other cards in the set so the art makes more sense in its full context uh, but regardless super solid super sweet expensive reprint speaking of mythic reprints we also got sword of war in peace so sword of war in peace again with a box topper version uh gives a creature plus two plus two protection from red and white when it deals damage you get to hit your opponent for the amount of damage equal to the cards they have in hand and gain life equal to the cards you have in hand so sword of war in peace it's kind 
kind of a medium sword, I'd say. It's only around $20, so still worth more than the price of a pack, so not a bad reprint by any means, but not a high-end sword. It does see a tiny bit of playing commander. Uh, it's definitely not a staple there, but equipment-based decks, a Nahiri, a Kiri, anything that's built around equipment will at least consider it. Gets better if your local playgroup has a lot of red and white decks in it, or you're trying to be really aggressive, so the damage matters. On the other hand, Sword of Word piece is probably like the fourth best sword, I think, as far as seeing overall play. In Commander, and also other formats, it's really like Sword of Feast and Famine, probably number one, followed by Sword of Fire and Ice, then Sword of Light and Shadow, and then after that, you're down to Sword of War and Peace. So this is definitely not one of the best of the sword cycle. However, considering we already got Sword of War and Peace, it's very possible that more swords are out of the way as well. So if this is a sign that we're going to be getting some of the more expensive and more powerful swords, like uh, Fire and Ice, Light and Shadow are pretty expensive still, Feast and Famine sees a lot of play, that would be uh, a good sign for the future of Double Masters if this is just the first of the entire sword cycle. So, Sword of War and Peace, definitely a fight open. I do like the box topper art coming in Double Masters in the near future. We also got a couple of random lands. So, Glimmer Void and Blake Moth Nexus. These are kind of weird ones. These are cards that in the not super distant past, were pretty expensive and were pretty in demand, specifically for modern. However, they've been reprinted multiple times. They're actually not that expensive now. I think they're both in like the five ish dollar range, although you can see on the spreadsheet that's all updated. So you can check it out there if you want to see the exact price. But they're at the five dollar range after at some points being like 20 plus dollars. So, kind of the problem with these cards is they used to be top tier cards in modern back when Affinity was a deck. But since Mox Opal was bad, Affinity was with Arcbound Ravagers and all those shenanigans haven't really been a deck in modern anymore, which means the demand for these cards has really dropped. They do see a little bit of play, like Blake Moth Nexus is a part of the Hardened Scales deck, so it does see a bit of play there, and if you go to Commander, Blink Moth shows up pretty regularly with decks that care about cheap creatures. If you're like playing Eureka, and you need two Ninjutsu, or Inias, and you need Flying Attackers, or Winota, and you need non-human attackers, Blink Moth's an easy addition there, because it's like plus one creature in your deck that doesn't actually cost you a creature slot. You get to play it as a land. As far as Glimmer Void, it seems even less play. I think uh, Blink Moth definitely sees more play, but Glimmer Void does occasionally show up in like multicolor artifact commander decks like Brea, Golos, Reaper King. If you can have an artifact on the battlefield, you do get a pain free version of City of Brass, which is really nice and powerful in a multicolor deck. Although there is a risk. Your opponent Vandal Blasts you or something, and not only do you lose all your artifacts, you lose a land as well, so there is some risk involved. So, not insane reprints by any means, but really, four or five dollar rares, you get a couple rares or mythics each pack, you're not going to be super disappointed to open one of these. They're definitely above bulk and have more uses than some cards we've seen, like Tree of Redemption and so forth in past master sets. Next on our list, we have Expedition Map, our cheap artifact land tutor, which is a very good card, but you're probably wondering, why are we talking about this random common? Why is it even worth its own slide? its own discussion in this video, and the answer is Expedition Map is showing up in Double Masters as a common. However, it is also a box topper, and this has led to a bit of confusion, because Wizards initially made it sound like all of the box toppers were going to be rares or mythics. Technically, I guess, Expedition Map is a rare because they put a rare symbol on it, but it is a common in the normal set. So people, myself included, a little bit leery of that. Wizards did apologize and uh, say that they messed up in their advertising, saying they would all be rares. That said, Expedition Map, it is an in-demand card, and I don't even think it's a bad box topper. It's got sweet art, and Expedition Map is an ultra-staple in Modern, but also in Commander as well. In Modern, this is a key piece of getting Tron lands uh, in the Tron deck with the card. Essentially, you're going to be able to open most of Modern Tron from Double Masters boosters, it looks like. More importantly, it is an ultra staple of Commander. It is one of the 30 most played colorless cards, and that's competing against Soul Rings and Arcane Signets in the entire format. It is used primarily in black decks to get Cabal Coffers and Herborg combo for tons of mana. Also, mono white decks to get like a Myria. Plus, you can take whatever you need. You can grab a Strip Mine if you need it. Whatever utility land you want. 
lot. So because of this, there's actually a lot of demand for Expedition Map, and I think, even though it's a common, it is going to be a fairly valuable box topper. We've seen, like, Ornithopter, Kaladesh, and Vengeance, and Ornithopter is the bulkiest of bulk cards, end up being, like, $50. I would not be surprised if Expedition Map had value, because Modern Tribe players are going to want them, Commander players are going to want them, there's not another sweet promo edition of Expedition Map out there. So while it's a little weird that it's a common when it sounded like we were getting all rares as box toppers, it is still a decent card to get as your box topper, and definitely a good combat in the set. It's like $4, so knocking the price down to presumably bulk prices from the normal reprinting is going to be a nice little bonus for people playing modern or putting together commander decks. We also got... Tron lands returning a double bastard. So Tron lands, we already talked about them with Karn. You use them to cast Karn. They're really good in modern. These are also coming with box toppers. So we actually have a total of wizard said eight commons or uncommons that are gonna get the box topper treatment, which is a lot different than zero. Like that uh, means 20% ish of all box toppers will be a common and uncommon. Uh, Tron lands though, they do have demand. These are actually the box toppers I'm least excited for. Obviously, if you are are a trod player and you want to spice up your Tron lands, these are also some options for that, but I expect these to be some of the lower value box toppers that we've seen so far, at least. Also worth mentioning, these are the cards that make the panorama with Karn. If you put them all together, you get Karn on one side, you get all the lands together, so a cool little flavor add there as well. We also got some reflection, boon reflection, thought reflection, kind of getting into bulk rare land. Uh, boon reflection, I guess, is actually $10, although it's got a kind of deceiving price tag. Uh, Boon Reflection is one of those cards that is expensive, not because people want it or it's in demand, but it's expensive because it's never been reprinted and its only printing was in Shadowmoor, which is like 15 years ago now. So there's just not a ton of supply. So it's one of those cards that are expensive because of low supply rather than high demand. As far as seeing play, uh, Boon Reflection, it's a little awkward. You would think that this is a card that white life game commander decks would play, like Linded, Daxos, Aloro, but I actually looked on EDH Rack and in general, even the white life game commanders don't play Boon Reflection anymore. Like, every once in a while, someone does. But for the most part, it's not a card that sees play. And I think that's because there's just other better options available. Like, Alhamrat's Archive does what Boon Reflection does, plus it might draw you extra cards. Rock's Face Mender does what Boon Reflection does, plus you get a big body and it's a little bit cheaper. So even though $10 sounds nice right now, this is a card I expect to drop in price drastically. Uh, just wait a little bit. You'll be picking these up for like a dollar or something. It's going to be a bulk rare after these reprinting, which I guess is a good thing if you are one of the few people that actually needs a boot reflection for your deck. As far as thought reflection, sometimes shows up in wheel style decks. Arjun, uh, Tomorrow, Zombies Familiar, the Locust God. Although again, it's another card that has been kind of replaced by other options if you want this effect. Teferi's Ageless Insight is like 95% of it. You don't get the trigger from your draw for your turn, but you get it from every other draw, and it's four mana compared to seven. So I don't know why I would ever play Thought Reflection over to Fairy's Ageless Insight. Uh, Alhamrat's Archive essentially does the same thing for five. And again, you miss your draw step for the turn, but maybe you have some life gain synergies. So Thought Reflection, Boon Reflection, <sighs> my best hope is that they mean that the rest of the Reflection cycle is coming, because like Mana Reflection and Wound Reflection are actually really expensive cards. I think Mana Reflection is like $45, Wound Reflection is like $25. Although again, kind of like Boon Reflection, that's because they don't have much supply rather than an insane amount of demand, although they do have more demand than these reflections. So if this is a sign the rest of the reflection cycle is making its return, that's a good thing. But really, these are going to end up being bulk rares, not super exciting for players of any format. We also got Conjurer's Closet, a card that has been reprinted a couple times, but just keeps going back up in value because it sees a ton of playing commander. Just a five mana artifact that at the beginning of your end step lets you blink one of your creatures, kind of like a Thassa, Thassa Deep Dwelling, but in artifact form. So not insanely expensive, but it's like $6, $7, and it is a card you're going to need for Commander. It sees play in two styles of decks primarily. One is decks that have Commanders with Enter the Battlefield triggers. So Gonti, Garuda, Atris. If you got a Commander with an ETB, Conjurer's Closet just lets you reuse that every turn. Like, what's better than Gontying one of your opponents? 
Gotting them every turn by Blinky or Gati with Conjurer's Closet. The other place Conjurer's Closet sees play is with Blink style commanders. If you're playing like Rune or Thassa or Yarion, a deck that's built around uh, Panharmonicon style effects, enter the battlefield creatures. Conjurer's Closet is just a great value play, giving you another way to keep blinking your enter the battlefield creatures, your Mull Drifters, and your Cloud Blazers for value. I know it's not an insanely high end card, but a solid like five, six dollar rare that does see a lot of playing commander. We all also got Baleful Strix, and Baleful Strix, another card that isn't super valuable, just a little two drop that gives you death touch and fly and draws a card when it comes into play, has been reprinted a bunch of times, but it does see a bit of play back in Legacy, unfortunately not legal in Modern, or it would see a ton of play in Modern, but it shows up in Commander decks as well, Yarok style decks, Yuriko style decks, Artifact style decks like Brea, so another solid if unexciting reprint. I think the problem with Baleful Strix is it's been in Commander decks, it's been in other Master sets, it's just been reprinted a bunch of times now, so the price is pretty low, so not an exciting open from that perspective, but definitely a card you're going to want in your collection, and having more copies out there isn't going to hurt. Otherwise, at the bottom end of the scale today, we just got some bulk. Uh, Grim Lava Mancer, Champion of Lamholt, Megas of the Abyss, Reclamation Sage, fine, uncommon, but we get it like every core set. These are cards that are definitely the least exciting that we've seen today, especially little mini rant here about Grim Lava Mancer, Champion of Lamholt. These are cards that were just reprinted, and I mean just like a week ago in Jumpstart, and now they're getting reprinted again in a $15 a pack master set, a $100 VIP booster master set, so that's a little bit disappointing, definitely not cards that you're going to want to open in your $100 or $15 booster pack, especially since they just got reprinted, but at least Grim Lava Mancer does see some constructed play, so not a horrible reprint in that sense, but not high value at all. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end of our daily Double Master spoilers for today. So, before we go, I do want to mention where we're at value-wise. So, right now, day one of spoiler season, including stuff that was spoiled earlier, the average value of a Mythic from the set... $49. So that's actually pretty good. If you hit a Mythic in your $50 pack, uh, you're going to be doing very, very well, regardless of the Mythic. The best Mythics, you're looking at Mana Crypt, Jason Mayan Sculptor, up in the $100 range. So average Mythic value, absolutely solid right now. Very, very good. As far as rares, a little bit worse. The average rare value is $4.17, which if you're paying $15 a booster, you get two rares, you're going to on average lose money there. So figures crazy that we hopefully get some more good rares that have higher value, especially considering a lot of these cards are going to go down. Like Boon Reflection, right now, it counts as $10 on our spreadsheet, but it's going to end up being $1 or something very, very quickly. So hopefully we get some more good rares, but Mythic's off to a great start. Rares uh, doing okay by the numbers, but when you factor in the price declines, a little bit nervous. Going to need some more value there, but we'll check back in on it tomorrow, see how things are developing. Anyway, what do you think about these cards? How excited are you for Jace and cards? What do you think about the common box toppers? Uh, are you disappointed? Are you going to be excited to open a Tron land or an expedition map? Is that a good thing, a bad thing? What about the other cards? What are you looking forward to? What are you waiting for? Are you going to be picking it up? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.